What's up guys? Welcome back to Golf Simulator videos. Well, today's the day that so many people have been asking about. This is the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro review. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I thought we would do is, is just take a quick look at the contents that come with the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. I know we've talked about a lot of the features in our Everything You Should Know video. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do. I'll put a link to that down in the description. But let's just talk about real quick, this is going to be the box that your unit comes in. Um, pretty simple and compact. They have some information on the back about their 40,000 simulated courses. Obviously, the integrated cameras uh, that are in the device, we've talked about that. The built-in radar, all right? And we'll talk more about that as we get going here. Uh, data visit visualization, um, the 12 measured metrics that they have, and that does include spin access and spin rate. That was an important one that so many people discussed, you know, the importance of this unit being used indoors with their tracking ball. I'll show you here in a second. Um, that is the Callaway RPT. It's a Chrome Soft X ball that has their special markings on it. Um, and then, of course, it says right here, uh, you know, to scan the QR code so you can download uh, their app and get more information. So pretty simple box comes with this carrying case with the unit comes inside. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Didn't have, you know, a, a long time to, you know, kind of show you guys everything at the PGA show. So I thought to give you a quick look. We don't have to do like a full in-depth unboxing, but show you the unit up close and what it comes with. So here's the unit itself. Kind of comes with some plastic wrap on the back. We can go ahead and pull that off. And then there is a USB-C port on the side. I wanted to point that out. That is uh, your charging connection. Um, and if there was a data connection necessary, a USB-C on the side there. And then also a power connection on this side. And I'll show you guys a kind of a up close of the unit here. I did a quick camera setup, you know, not, not the best setup in the world here, here in the GSV studio, but I think it's going to give you a really good, you know, depiction of the unit itself. All right. And then down here at the bottom, you will see that's that USB charging port I was talking about. This is your tripod, which is pretty cool. It actually, uh, you know, kind of flips apart like that. All right. I like how it goes together like that in all one piece. And then this just simply goes into the bottom here and then clicks in. And so that becomes your solid unit with the tripod. You can just flip apart like that and set down. All right. This is made out of like uh, a metal, which is pretty cool. So you know that that, uh, you know, is obviously going to, you know, be a strong material. And then I feel like the unit's, you know, quality built. You can see the two cameras and then the radar. Um, I did talk briefly about those cameras in the Everything You Should Know video. We'll talk more about them as we get going here. Um, but, you know, some important things to understand what they're doing there. So they have multiple cameras, all right? Those cameras are gonna do everything from enable swing recording, their new shot vision technology, which we'll show you a quick demonstration here in the video. Um, and then also uh, be able to measure that ball, all right, the actual movement of the ball, which is going to be very important for your, for your data metrics. Uh, unit comes with a USB to USB-C charging cable. Unit uh, battery lasts like two to four hours, I think is what was stated. And then a uh, quick start guide, which, uh, you know, I've taken a look at this already. Um, pretty simple stuff. I mean, you have an LED guide, uh, your setup uh, of the unit. You can actually place, and I didn't know if I showed this actually at the PGA show or not, but the way that this tripod works, and I can bring it up closer, you guys can see it, is they have actual slots here to where you can set either a phone or an iPad right on the unit facing you. Now there's going to be uh, another feature that you might wanna use. This actually has dual swing camera recording capabilities where you could actually take your iPod or iPhone and place it on a tripod in front of you and use the integrated swing camera on the MLM2 Pro to record your down the line. And then your face on camera is going to record your face on swing. So you'll be able to still see your data and things on your unit, whether it's an iPad or, or uh, iPhone, um, even an Android device. Uh, I would really recommend using a tablet. Um, that way you can see all the data. That's what we're going to use today. So, all right. Without further ado, I just wanted to give you guys just kind of a quick, brief look at the unit. Let's go ahead and dive in. We're gonna get this thing set up and aligned and connected to the MLM2 Pro software and give you guys a quick, brief overview with some shots and things that way you can see how this performs inside the GSV Studio. So let's go ahead and get started with that. 
All right, guys, so welcome back inside the GSV studio. We have our Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. Have it nicely set up, uh, level behind the unit uh, to ball, seven feet. So from the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro to our ball is seven feet. Seems to be pretty optimal because I took some test shots and uh, I can see pretty much my whole swing from down the line. And I even looked at the shot vision camera um, and that looks you know nice as well. And I have 10 feet from my ball to my screen. So their optimal setup is anywhere from uh, six and a half to eight feet, uh, might be eight and a half feet, don't hold me to that, from the unit to the ball, and then they want at least eight feet of flight from ball to your screen or net. All right, so that's the setup. Do make sure your unit is level and aligned. You can actually use an alignment tool inside here. I can show you guys, it works really nice. I did wanna show you the RPT ball. So let's just give you a quick you know, close up of this ball and you'll see the pattern. They did tell me, so I confirmed with them, because I said, are people going to you know, be able to create stickers and place them on a ball of choice? Well, notice how all of these are very unique. They did not recommend that. So they said it's very specific markings um, placed very specifically on the ball. They did not recommend placing stickers on the ball. They are for sale currently on their website. It's $69 a dozen for these balls. They seem to be lasting a good amount of time for people that I noticed that were beta testers. Um, this is my first time using the unit. So, um, you know, I haven't actually seen how, you know, I, I'm sure that the more high spin wedges that you're hitting, you're going to tear up the ball more. So just know that it uh, depends on how you're playing. And everyone's not going to get the same lifespan out of a ball. But let's go ahead and go over to our iPad. You'll notice that we're recording vertically right now. Well, I did actually verify with Rapsodo that they, it sounds like they're going to come out with an update, but it is kind of, you know, funky how you are vertical and then switch to horizontal um, as you're navigating through the app. So it sounds like they'll be working on, you know, getting that to where it's all landscape view and not, not uh, switching back and forth. But we'll just go to profile really quick because I want to show you guys, um, you get a, a premium membership for one year with the unit and then it's $199 a year after that. You do need that for full data and connection to, you know, third party software like Awesome Golf is one of them. I'll make sure I show that in the channel here soon. I want you guys to comment below anything that you want to see. Make sure you let me know what you want to see, but let's just go in here really quick. You'll see that our firmware is up to date to the latest 2.4.3 um, and it's actually 2.43. All right, sorry about that. Um, and I just wanted uh, everyone to know that that was an important update. They were having some connection issues. Make sure that you uh, update your firmware before you get started with your unit. But I did add some clubs in there. Um, there's not a whole lot in settings. That's just going to be your units, um, you know, handicap, things like that. So um, I do have a cellular connection on my iPad. So I'm actually doing a direct connect to my uh, Rapsodo. Uh, MLM2 Pro. I think that is the best, you know, thing to do unless you have really strong Wi-Fi. Um, my all Wi-Fi can be a little sketchy, so I just think Direct Connect's the easy way to go. And then if I go to Home. This is where you'll see uh, stats and sessions. You'll actually see that I do have a few simulation sessions. I was testing that out. Um, the unit showed up last night. I took some shots. And uh, this morning I took a few shots and we're, I think we're good to go. So let's just go to play. I want to show you practice. This is something that you're probably going to use out at the range more than inside your house. But let's just show you what that looks like. Uh, current elevation, you can see it's correct for where I am because I know I'm right around 800 feet, give or take. Um, it has me at 884. All right, we'll hit connect. And then you'll see I put some clubs in there. I can just go ahead and select uh, an eight iron. One cool thing that it has is it actually has club recognition. So you can hold your club up to the camera and it will look at the bottom of your club and change the club automatically in a session. I don't know if a lot of people talked about that, but notice how you can set your target line. All right, and I have that set right to my white dot down there. You'll see my ball is inside of the hitting area. So we're good to go. If I wanted to switch this now to landscape, I can do that inside of this session. Um, we can go ahead and take a quick shot inside of the session. No reason not to while we're in here. So let's just go ahead and grab my eight iron. What I usually do is I will make sure the ball faces the unit without any markings. And it's just gonna you know, help the wear and tear of those dots. You're not gonna play a million rounds with a ball just like you, you wouldn't outside. So let's go ahead and just take a quick shot here. The other reason I wanted to take a shot uh, with this session mode is because this is where you're going to find your shot vision. So not only is it gonna show me that swing replay, 
but there is an option I'll show you for that, I should say impact vision. All right, now the interesting part about the impact vision, we'll just show you guys how this looks really quick. So there's my eight iron, it carried 153. It was actually a, a, a pretty good swing to start things off. Um, you can go to your data as well, but in order to currently access that impact vision, you actually have to exit the session. All right, you're going to go to home, you're going to enter that session, you're going to select the shot, down at the bottom, notice that there's your video camera down there. You're going to go ahead and select that. Here is my swing. All right, and then notice the red down at the bottom. If I hit that, I can switch to impact vision. And then now there's the impact. Now I'm quite impressed. Don't get me wrong, I have a pretty well lit area and it does has, have infrared on the unit. But I mean, that is just a nice image hitting the ball. I can see right where it hit on the club. And this is what I wanted to point out to people. So like how many rotations are they getting on this ball to measure the spin axis? Well, there's one, there's two, and then I believe, yep, there's three. So they're getting three full rotations of the ball to come up with their spin and spin axis measurement. Um, and notice the ball is just crystal clear even on that third frame before it, it uh, you know, goes outside of the viewing angle. But this is really cool. And of course, this is gonna change a little bit if your unit's a little bit closer, a little bit further behind. I actually really like where I have it set up right now. Um, so that's it, that is your practice mode. And now if you wanted to switch to combines, they have some cool combine you know, practice that you can go through. I'm not gonna do that today. We'll probably do that in another video. Um, it's pretty cool that they have that feature. You can set different targets. Um, but what I wanted to show you guys, of course, which a lot of people wanted to see was the simulation. So we'll go to the Rapsodo range. Now, if you were connecting to third-party apps, you'd hit that tab at the top and connect to Awesome Golf. I figured I'd do a complete other video showing you guys third-party apps, so stay tuned for that. As I mentioned, comment below what you wanna see, but let's just go ahead and go to the Rapsodo range. All right, once again, I'm hitting into a net or a screen, current elevation. See how that even changed? You know, I don't know if it's actually getting barometric pressure uh, from outside or, or what it's doing. It's really cool how it's just pulling that in though. And then we'll just go back to eight iron. Maybe we'll even grab a seven iron or something as we're hitting uh, a few shots and we'll let it see if it changes. Now here's something that I noticed, the target line. It seems like it's like slightly, if you see how it's a view alignment, it seems like it slightly changes simulation versus the actual practice because now I actually have to actually aim this just a little bit left it seems to hit my white dot which is the center down there and i'm not quite sure if that's you know normal operation or not i think we need to ask them that um my ball if it's in the center let's just put it kind of in that hitting area make sure it's yeah so it's in the hitting zone and i know i'm i'm aligned with my white dot down there so we should be good but yeah, I do want to verify with them because it seems like it changes ever so slightly with the simulation versus when we were on the practice mode. But you'll see we're in a landscape view now, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and hit a few balls here. I'm going to try to start off with my classic kind of little fade that I've been working on. Now I caught that one just a little bit heavy, but the good news is, is that ball is doing exactly what I expected it to, just a little fade. All right, notice how the carry was a little shorter versus that first one, because I caught it a little bit heavy. All right, we'll try to switch it up here to more of a straight, possible slight draw. I think that might push a little bit, yeah. It's, it's drawing a little bit, but notice how it's more of a more of a push. I caught it really well. I didn't close the face as much, and I had time to uh, you know call that out. So if I would have released the club a little more, that would have been more of that little bit of a push draw that I was trying to hit there. Now there is a slight delay after your shot. It's very minimal. I did want to point that out to everybody. I had a few people asking about that. Nothing uh, extreme. Spin rates, launch angles. Everything seemed to be spot on 
for what I normally see uh, with an eight iron. And you guys have seen that so much in the channel. I think you can confirm. Now I did compare to some other units briefly. I noticed the numbers were very comparable. Um, you know, we're talking within a few percent and uh, I will probably do a comparison video if you guys wanna see that. It's gonna be interesting to make sure that whatever units I use can read properly with all those various dots on the ball. It's not gonna mess with them, but um, I used, uh, high-end GC quad just to kind of compare it, you know, right out of the gate and seemed like it was a really good comparison. But here's something that you might not want to put too much stock into is the total distance if you were working out here. I don't know if it's like rolling down these hills or what it's doing, but it showed there a 12-yard rollout. All right. And unless it's doing a specific, you know, landing on flat ground or whatever, I'm always paying attention to carry. So something you might want to do. Now let's see if we can hit a little more of a draw this time. I sort of was a, there we go. Come on, come around. I just didn't quite release it as, as much as I'd like to. I mean, not a bad shot. I'm just getting a little weak at impact, not, uh, not getting it all around. All right, let's see if we can, they're not bad shots. Try to get this to do a kind of a heavy, heavy draw this time. Well, of course I, I caught it thin, but it's gonna, it's gonna draw the way I wanted it to. All right. I like how it's reading the thin shots well. You'll see the launch angle was down. Um, everything seems to be really reading great. And what I'm trying to do every time is I'm just trying to put my ball there to where I'm not hitting the dots on the ball. You know, it's easy to do. I'm gonna go back to a little fade here. That was a really well struck ball. Kind of just has a little bit of a fade to it. My spin, as you guys have seen in tons of videos with eight iron demonstrations, you know, around 7,000. Um, I just like what I see overall. I mean, this is just great. My carry distances are right on for my eight iron. Um, you know, for being a first look review of the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, um, it's working really well for me. So there's going to be a lot more videos coming. What I'd like to do, I had a lot of people asking about chipping. And then what I'd also like to do is grab a different club. Let's just grab a seven iron. Does this work on simulation? I think it might only work on session. And you know, you guys let me know if, you, if you've already figured this out. But yeah, you don't even have to touch your tablet. You're supposed to disable, you know, to hold the club up. So it might only work on session and not simulation. But what I wanna do is grab my wedge, which this is measuring the ball. You don't have to switch. Um, I will just for like data reasons, but this is not affecting the reads so like lob wedge. Now we're on lob wedge. I'll have to verify how that works. I had a lot of people asking if you're going to go out on the courses, you know, how's the chipping going to work? So let's just go ahead and just hit a few small chips for you guys, you know, little 10 yard chips. Let's just see how, uh, there you go. A little more than 10 yards on that one, but you can see that picked that up no problem because if you're going to be playing simulation, this unit does not offer putting. All right. I had a lot of people ask about that. I don't know if it's coming in the future or not, but just know that uh, it currently does not offer putting. But let's go ahead and just hit another. I'm going to go a little bit shorter on this one. Yeah, look at that 10 yard chip. And that was exactly what I was trying to do. I told you a 10 yard chip. Um, so if you're just trying to get it up on the green, I mean, I'll, I'll try to carry this one real, real short. I don't know how short it can go. I kind of caught a little bit behind the ball there. That would have been a, I don't know, you know, 10 foot, I guess it landed right at the screen. So it would have been a 10 foot chip. Doesn't look like it can go 10 feet. I'll try to go maybe a little bit higher. It probably needs to see the ball. That was a little bit higher. Yeah, so it looks like that breaking point might be 15 feet or so. I'll hit this one a little bit harder. How far was that? Yeah, see? But you can get under 10 yards. So it just depends on, uh, you know, how close a pin might be to be right off the green. That might be a challenge for simulation um, for chipping. And they, and they may dial that in too. We'll have to ask him some questions. I'm gonna hit one maybe, see if I can get like seven yards. 
How's that? Did I read it? Yeah, so that's the breaking point. Is right there, maybe eight or nine yards or so, you're gonna find. We'll just go one more, just a little bit longer. That's probably 12 yards or so. Oh no, that was a little bit shorter. That was only nine yards. Cause that one was a little bit more of a, a launch. So I think with more launch, we'll try to hit one more with a little more launch. There, that was higher, but shorter. That's what it likes. Yep. It likes a little higher, shorter shot probably to see it. But everyone asked about chipping. Know that I'm hitting nine yard chips, no problem. So um, you can do chipping. So let's take a look at the courses really quick. I wanted to show you guys that. So we're just going to exit out of this session. Leave session. Go back to main menu. Rapsodo courses. Search for a course. Well, of course I'm going to search for one of my own. I wonder if my internet connection, oh, you want to know what it is? I bet you it's my, come on, there we go. My keyboard is connected. So Warwick, if I didn't have my uh, keyboard connected, wouldn't have to do that. But this is my home course is Warwick Hills. And look at that, it has it. So it needs to load the course data. This is another thing that they wanted to point out that you need an internet connection for. It looks like it loaded it. We have it selected. There are my tee shots. Now they usually play everything from the white tees out there, all the tournaments and uh, competitions and everything. So I'm gonna select white. Uh, net, Repsoto Ball. Um, let's just go to, we'll play the back nine. Oh, let's select holes because we have we have famous holes out at Warwick Hills. Let's just select hole 17. That'd be perfect. One hole selected. And let's see here. Automatic putting within 10 feet, two putt 30 feet. Graphic quality. Well, of course, we're going to go high. All right. I like how it lets you select your gimme range. And then here we are out at number 17. Now, this is something that someone pointed out that I think is important to note. That one, I don't know if it allows, let's see here, all right, hold on. I wanna make sure our alignment's good. Our alignment looks good. So it's going to stay in a vertical format and someone did, we have 2D and 3D. So there's your 2D view and there's your 3D view. Let's go to menu really quick. Pick up ball, airplay, yeah. And you can view your alignment again, of course, but there's a couple things going on here I wanted to point out. So the, the courses itself, this might be the same, you know, distance and everything on this course of Warwick Hills, but it's generic, you know, GPS data. There, this, this is not the proper elevation. It's not really what it looks like out at Warwick Hills. So this is a test I wanted to point out to everybody. It's probably one of those things where you're gonna be looking at some third-party software most likely. Um, and then go go figure, this should be an eight iron as long as I can uh, maybe hit a draw up in there. Um, you know, it's not going to be that perfect 3D simulation that you guys might experience with some other, you know, third party software. And I just wanted to point that out. But you're going to need that subscription for your spin access and everything regardless. So there's water up there. Target's 150 yards or 58 yards. I'm really going to have to hit this strong. I'm going to try to hit a little bit of a draw. I was trying to show you guys that big draw the whole time anyway. Let's see if we can actually do it. Oh, I caught it heavy. That's not good. <laughs> That's either going to... Oh, it's going to make it, I think. Barely. Barely. I mean, I caught that thing. You can see I was trying to go 158 and I caught it just a little bit heavy. But because it was a draw, I squeezed a little extra distance out of it. And you can see it obviously bounced and rolled a little bit. And so once I'm within that 30 feet, that's going to two putt, and then I'm going to get my par. So we just gave you guys a little quick simulation demo on our first look review. So wanted to show you guys that. You can obviously hit finish round or start round from there. What I'd like to do is, is like I said, I want you guys to comment below 
what your thoughts are. This is just a first look video. I figured that we would do uh, maybe you know a full shot shaping video. We'll do uh, maybe some woods like hybrid and three wood and, and uh, driver. Um, also want to do a full awesome golf video for you guys. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Anything else you want to see, just make sure you comment below. I just got this unit literally last night and I've probably only spent 15 minutes with it, let's say, before doing this video. But everyone wanted to see it so bad, I wanted to get it set up and show you that it was working well for me so far. As always, if you guys are looking to purchase a Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, I'll put a link down in the description and the pin at the top of the comments. I appreciate you guys watching as always. Stay tuned, there'll be a lot more coming soon.